Today I have something special for you guys. I'm going to tell you about 10 libraries that you should know about in 2019 if you are a React developer. Oh. Number one, we have GraphQL. So if you guys are used to using things like MySQL and been doing REST APIs or even MongoDB, etc., right? You guys should definitely look into GraphQL. Uh, instead of doing it through REST, this can actually make your life easier. If you are a front-end developer, you should definitely look into this because it seems like now the industry is going into uh, GraphQL for a lot of the more modern uh, projects. And when I mean modern, maybe startups and things that are popping up, you know, for the next year or even 2018, 2017. Okay, new projects like that. But there's still going to be a need for legacy, which is going to be MySQL, you know, Roll, MongoDB, Postgres, uh, freaking whatever database is out there. Right. Um, but this is good to know for those of you guys that are might be looking into startups or might be looking into building your own projects you guys should definitely look into graphql next one we have here of course you need to know redux you need to play around with redux at least you know know the basics you know because in reality everywhere you go at some point somebody's going to be using redux and you want to be able to understand it and be able to you know hit the ground running the worst thing is to have somebody who has never used redux and is joining a team and now it takes them a month to learn something or two weeks to learn it like trust me i've seen people that pick it up right away and there's people that takes them a long time to understand redux I don't know why it's just functional programming but it is what it is okay so definitely be ready to learn redux before you even start uh, applying for jobs number three i would say is unstated okay so unstated is a new way to you know handle your your state and it's way easier less boilerplate than what redux has okay so a lot of companies are starting to use this i've seen a lot of projects that are popping up people are starting to use unstated instead of redux because redux is is pretty heavy is is like i don't know it's a lot of boilerplate and like some people have issues understanding it and in reality with unstated is taking some of the things that redux has but at the same time it's like making it easier for people to come in and just hit the ground running so a lot of teams are actually uh using this now because it's easier to tell somebody look at this how we handle our state instead of having to look at you know a whole bunch of actions and you know a whole bunch of different states and with redux and you know a lot of things that people be like man this is too much okay so definitely check out unstated the next one we have here is formic if you guys have ever used react or any front-end framework you would know sometimes using uh you know validation and forms and things like that and you know keeping track of the state and doing all those things trying to take care of the forms it could be a headache but what formic does it makes everything much simpler for you and, and easier for you to work with so a lot of companies use it Palmer, Airbnb, Walmart, OpenTable, Lyft, Docker, Viacom, Nokia, Sony. Like a lot of people are using Formic. I think this is becoming now the standard. I remember, I think a while back, there was one that was called, I think, React Form or something like that. And um, I personally, I never liked it. I'd rather just use what I, <laughs> what I use, which is I build it myself. But it seems like Formic might be the answer to all the headaches for people who are in the front end and dealing with a lot of forms okay so definitely check it out formic all right guys the next one that we have here is next.js so it's a react framework if you're looking to build uh you know applications with react and you want to have this as the full stack then this is like the go-to because it, it basically has everything that you need to get started so you don't have to really worry about you know hey i gotta do gulp i gotta do uh webpack i gotta do all, all these things on my own 
well, this thing is already set up for you, okay? Has Node.js already set up for you to get up and running, start building projects, okay? SEO-friendly, PWAs, uh, you could even use it with Electron for production, okay? So it is what it is. Check it out. A lot of people are using this. You can see the showcase who's actually using this. Different companies, Magic Leap, uh, Netflix is using it, Binance, uh, Square Enix, so a lot of companies using this, uh, you know, full framework, Next.js. Okay, so definitely look into it. Okay, check it out. All right. The next one we have here is React Desktop. If you are looking to start building applications with Electron and you want to keep the same stylings as Windows or Mac OS, then you should definitely use this library. It basically gives you all the things that you might need. So like, let's say, for example, if I want to click on a button, this is a button that looks like the one that is on Mac. OK, if I come to the Windows button, I come here and this looks like a Windows button. All right. If I come here to the text, you'll see that it looks like what it is for Mac. OK, and come back down here. You'll see this is how it looks on Windows. OK, so there's a lot of cool little things like even navigation, different panels. OK, come here, let's say progressive circle. This is things that you might see on a Mac OS. OK, so pretty much it's just giving you the, the things that you might need to make your application feel more native. All right. Next one we have here is React Router. OK, React Router is great is the go-to router for your single page apps or even if you're just working on small applications and you might want to use uh, the routes to change your components, you might want to use React Router, okay? This is the go-to one. There's a lot of resources online for this. I even have a course on my website, Learn React by Building a Craigslist Clone, where we talk about React Router and we actually use it. So definitely check it out. Um, it's like a go-to thing, man. Like if you don't know React Router or know the basics, like all of these things I'm throwing at you, I'm not saying to become a master in them, but you need to be acquainted with it. You like, you need to actually know how to play around with it because you're going to bump into projects that might be using them. Okay. All right, guys, this next one is Gatsby. So if you are building your own website, let's say you want to build a blog let's say you want to build your portfolio let's say you want to build a simple static website so instead of you doing it just plain HTML CSS and then throwing some JavaScript on it you might as well use this framework which will create the static files for you and you could actually use it in a way that's similar to like WordPress but in your own way in the sense of like okay you could come here use react and then generate your whole website by using react and getting the you know good old things like react routers you could even come here and use things like graphql and even create progressive web apps like it's a lot of cool stuff that gatsby uh basically facilitates for you as a developer and this is great for those of you guys that are building your portfolios right now or building your first website, okay? And if you love React, like this is the way to go. This is like giving you access to building a website and just use React, okay? Some of us, we just wanna use one thing, right? Like we don't wanna be using 30 different type of uh, frameworks or libraries and et cetera. Like we wanna use one thing, we like React. Cool, let's use React for everything. And there you go. Gatsby is a great uh, framework to, or library, we could say library, to generate uh, static websites, okay? So definitely check it out. All right, guys, the next one that we have here is Storybook. This is like writing documentation for your components and showing it to people independently from your projects, okay? So instead of you having to create a component and say, oh, go to page uh, 24 where there's a form there. Now you can say, hey, man, you want to check out the uh, input fields component? Check out the Storybook. So pretty much you could check this out. Right. So this is how it looks. Let's say you have um, 
a storybook inside of your project. Now somebody could come here and look at all of the components and they could see how it looks with different options and different things that you might add to it. You'll see like this one is a clock component. You can say this is the digital clock, right? And then you could also say, hey, I could also have a analog clock, okay? Same thing with over here, let's say a dropped. So let's say simple drop, okay? This is on our stretch drop progressive drop you click here okay you got the lazy drop okay uh, there's a lot of stuff here that you could check this out let's say simple menu so this is just showing you different components and you can go in here and look at the documentation a little bit more uh, but this is just an example of how you can use storybook to display your components and use it as a way to document and show people what the component actually looks like without having to load it up on a full application and be like, hey, man, go to this page to see the component. It's like, nah, just literally just run this and that's it. All right. So definitely check it out. All right, guys. The last thing that we have here is testing. Jest. Enzyme. OK, so we have Jest. So this is a, a library to help you uh, test uh, JavaScript, right? do some tests on your JavaScript and basically it's very simple. It's built by Facebook. So it will run smoothly with your components. You can also use introduction uh, to enzyme, right? This is the documentation, but uh, enzyme, which is built by Airbnb. You could definitely check them out too. Um, and you could just connect it to your jest and it should be easier to test out components. So it's pretty cool, right? So this is the 10 things that I would say to check out for 2019. All right, guys, make sure you go visit codingphase.com. All you have to do is come here, click on courses. You will see that I have over 30 courses that you can take and use it to learn how to become a web developer and get a job ASAP. That's what I do. I focus on how to make you money and how to get you jobs as soon as possible. If you're into that, then go check out my website, codingphase.com. So I'm going to see you guys later. It's your boy Joe back at it again. I hope you like this video.